I'm glad this one came back. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. I recently took a big, huge journey to go buy a really rare Explorer. And normally, I don't travel more than an hour, so going to the Bostonish area was quite the trek for me. But since I was in that area, we visited Mr. Gold, the one that pointed out the Craigslist listing of that Explorer to me. We documented some of his guitars, and I told you I bought back some guitars that I had sold him previously, because I figured that would just really round out the trip. So this unboxing episode, we're going to look at most of them. Let's go ahead and kick off our journey tonight. Had this guitar came into my life six months later, I would have never have sold it. This came from my peak creativity era. I still look back on some of those videos very fondly, just because, you know, I was getting some really crazy stuff. The B-roll style was still very new and fresh. Back into my collection is the near-perfect 1977 25th anniversary Les Paul Custom. I'm so happy to have it back. So the story behind this unique model is most people remember the 2550th anniversary Les Paul because they were mass produced, they made tons of them, but they were technically made in the wrong year. Guitar Center commissioned a true 25th anniversary Les Paul that was done up in a nice silver finish and had a special tailpiece that was engraved 25th anniversary. Now, not all of them got that. Most of them were engraved by Les Paul on the pick guard. Some of them had it stylized down here. They were all kind of a little bit different. There's a bit of mystery surrounding that. You can check out the full review and documentation to learn more on it. But needless to say, in today's market, in any type of good condition with all original parts, these things are tough to find. It took me a long time to find this one to document. Now, I'm not going to lie and say that this is the cleanest one in existence, but you know it has relatively minor yellowing. It's got the important parts on it now. So this is one I will not be foolish enough to let go again. However, I am still looking for the gold version, so my hunt is not complete on these yet. But before we continue, we need to have a word from our sponsor, Sweetwater. Sweetwater is a great place to buy your stuff, but it's not just guitars. You can also buy amps, effects pedals, patch leads, you know, whatever you need for general music making. They are your place and they're happy to ship it to your door or you can visit their Fort Wayne, Indiana location. And if you happen to be local, they have tons of events all the time. They also do monthly giveaways that you can follow the link in the description to become a part of. Thank you, Sweetwater, for being a continuous sponsor of my show. And now let's get back to our guitar. But not all the guitars that I bought back are keepers. And I told it straight out to his face, hey, these two, I'm probably just going to move on. And that's mainly because they were offered to me back as a set, not necessarily one by one. And he was totally cool with that. So this little guy came back home. Yeah, it's another 25th anniversary, except for this one has aged significantly more. So the story behind why I bought this one is because that original really clean looking one did not have the 25th anniversary engraving. Now it's common for people to have replaced those. Again, we don't even know if every single one of them had it, but I had bought this one on the rare chance that there was a different one on the market at that point in time, swiped its tailpiece that was correct to create one perfect example. So this is still era correct as some of these are, except for it has like replaced tuners. I mean, it's slightly more players grade, but honestly, besides Besides the yellowed finish, it's not in that bad a shape, but this one will be hitting the market publicly after this video. But I had sold Mr. Gold both of these at the same time before I could ever make a listing for this one. So if you missed out the first time or you've got one with the gold hardware that you want to swap for a more goldy one, totally up for that. But if you ever wonder why silver bursts turn green, it's this phenomenon right here. The greening effect is just the silver underneath a yellowed clear coat. So silver burst without the bursted edges, I guess you could say. Take a Sharpie if you really want that look. Now let's move on to the one that I'm most happy to see back. Like that 25th anniversary is really cool, right? And it might be like a contender for number one, but this is a guitar I've never forgotten. And it's the whole reason why I remembered Mr. Gold's name, because this guitar has something to do with gold. That's right, my friends. The perfect gold burst is back. Now, it's been a long time since I've had this thing. I'm not going to tell you the history this time because it just needs re-reviewed and documented because the old video is just not that good. Early on in my career, I had some truly special pieces that I didn't fully understand how historic they would be. I also didn't know I'd be trying to piece together a museum for other people to enjoy the pieces. Believe it or not, I sold this for $3,500. Gotta understand, seven years ago, a Les Paul Custom had to be either absolutely perfect condition or a really rare color. No custom really broke the $4,000 barrier. Nowadays, it's way over double that. 
what I remember most about this guitar is taking this outside photo shoot. Now, I originally thought that was for him, but now looking back at my messages, that was from somebody else trying to get cool photos from me. <laughs> Hopefully they didn't use those to scam anybody. But those photos have always stuck in my mind. They just look so good out there on that little patio. This is a very infamous and rare finish within Gibson's history that we'll talk about a little bit more in depth later on. To find one this clean is insane. I knew it was rare, but I didn't realize I would never see another one like this again. So Gold Burst Review and Demo. You'll probably see it in the next month or two because these things are awesome. But you know, Gold Burst, Mr. Gold, it makes sense. I also smiled when I sold him the Goldie 25th. <laughs> Just play on words. Our next one is a little bit different. I realized it would be hard to ever find it again, but I listed it for a crazy price anyway. Because again, this was just my documentation era. I didn't care if I loved the thing or not. It's like the Steve Howe TLP. I just bought them to document and then moved on. That's the only way I could afford to do what I was doing. But inside here, we have candy apple red custom but this has the rare gold base coat. You can find other candy apple customs, but they always have the silver coat. And most of these were factory refinished because they have this ugly orange peel effect to them. It all comes down to the gold base coat just didn't play well with everything else. So to find one in its all orange peeled goodness and the finish hasn't flaked off on it, it's just so incredibly rare. Like most people would not want this guitar, right? This is a collector's only piece for the most part. But this is one I do have a review on it, although I might redo it in the future. This is one I'm truly happy to have back because I have not seen another one show up in the past five years exactly like it. And it helps having diamond posi lock buttons and the flip out winding tuners to make it extra awesome. But that is another keeper that I will not let go again. But our last one from the Gold Collection is a little bit different. I did not personally sell Mr. Gold this guitar, but I did sell this like months before. This is one of those guitars when I would sell like everything off to CME that didn't sell within like the first couple of weeks because they made some really strong offers on Reaver back then. I mean, I sold like 80 guitars to them in the course of a year, but this is a charcoal metallic custom. So personally, I'm on the fence about this one. It is one of those rarer 80s colors, but it's not like quite as exquisitively clean. You can go back to the review and documentation of this one to get my full thoughts and opinions. But the whole thing with charcoal metallic is guys such as the Mastodon guitar player, he would grab these things and play them. And honestly, they just sound so different and great that the finish always gets worn off the back of the neck. So that's why I had purchased this one all those years ago. There's like a little bit around the edges. That just more so looks like a flake rather than being worn through, but it's got like a couple of dings on the neck. I mean, honestly, now I'm looking at it in this lighting, it's not that bad. Like sure, we got a little bit of buckle worming marks. So I think this is one, it's in my collection for now until I find like a cleaner one. Because I remember at one point in time, I had one that didn't have the aged clear coat. Because that's what's kind of cool about this finish, is it starts a really nice gray color, but as it ages, it turns olive green. But the rare color customs, they just always make me so happy. So that's why I was happy to pick up more of those for my collection. Like I still have that pearl white that we had picked up a while ago. So honestly, if I were to line up all my customs, I think that would be a pretty impressive sight. So I came back and I'm pretty happy about that. So from my giant road trip journey, that just leaves this bad boy to talk about. So you guys can look forward to seeing this one soon. It'll be titled, I drove 28 hours to buy this guitar. But now moving on, we've got some small packages to take a look at. Let's find out what we've got. Something labeled Ebony. Ah, yes, I remember now. This is something from my new old stock parts collection. So this is like an early 2000s era Gibson touch-up pen. They used to sell these things because, uh-oh, you dinged your guitar. Here's a real lacquer pen. You can use it. Now, are the results fantastic? No, but they're still pretty good. Like, Stumac sells these in a different way yet today. But this was the first one that I had ever seen that still had the original packaging with it. Usually when these show up, they're just loose. So I figure, yes, I have to keep that. I actually have a loose one of these that I use to occasionally touch up a guitar. But whenever you find one of these, always ask the seller because they might have more. Now, unfortunately, I missed the boat. They said, yeah, we had like all the colors, 10 of them. And yeah, I was just too late to the party. So I'm sad. It's ebony because I just missed out on an auction for like, I think it was Ferrari Red or something a couple of days ago. But these things are cool, even if they're not that great. Next, we've got a box. And inside that box, we've got a party! 
But more importantly, we've got us these. So these are supposed to be Tim Shaw PAFs. This was one of the first offers I had made with Reverb's new, yes, you can charge me right away if they accept. So you always have to be careful buying things that people call Tim Shaw's online because most of the times people are confused on it. So do Tim Shaw PAFs have to have the six to seven digit ink stamp? No, they do not. That's mainly the early ones. Like late 85, 86, they can be bare. And that's kind of what this one looks like to me in 85 or 86 Shaw. The other important thing you want to look for are the brass base plate screws. If they're not brass, they can't be a Tim Shaw. Now, had these covers ever been disturbed, we could take those off, look at the spacers, make sure they're white, look at what type of magnets they have. Because when you start to get the larger base plate screws, that's when you know you have a later 80s PU 490. So with what I'm seeing here, I am perfectly happy to verify these are Tim Shaw's. And I always like to have a spare set handy in case I need them or if somebody else asks me for them. So they're not cheap, but the set is available. And now it looks like a viewer of the show sent me a pamphlet. So let's see what might be inside. It's a deer. So I'd received a message one day that a viewer of the show was cleaning out their house and they had no use for these paper materials and wanted to know if I wanted them for the museum collection. It's like, yeah. I mean, if you guys have stuff like this and you're just going to throw it away, I will happily take it. Like right now, I don't necessarily have a use for the 30th anniversary deluxe, but I'm sure one day I will as I build the collection. I just like seeing all these old promotional flyers because that, that's what we don't get in the modern age anymore. It's all online stuff. We don't get print. So it will be kind of boring to collect the 2020s era because people have YouTube videos to look back on rather than print. But this is kind of cool. The 1959 Les Paul reissue, 40th anniversary ones. You definitely don't see this pamphlet out there all the time. I mean, that's when they were using the historic collection logo like that. That's really cool. There's a lot of reworkers who love to take those and like turn them into like full on burst specs. But I was really happy when he showed me this one. You guys know what that is. That's the little Lucille and we got BB King over here playing one. So basically it's a blues hawk with a Lucille type element to it. You get your veritone, you get the TP6 tailpiece to make a fancy. I do want to document one of those one day. So very happy and appreciative to have had that in my collection now because I will be able to show that side by side. And then this was another cool one. It's the Flying V 98. Very shortly lived version of the Flying V. It's mainly a 67 style, except for it has the 58 style layout. So instead of the output jack up here, it's actually separate. As far as the headstock, no gaudy logos or anything. But this is where you can find interesting things. So there's natural, natural burst, and then most people just call these things wine red, but apparently they're called translucent purple. Very cool. Thank you. And now that our small items are done, we have a few packing stories. And to start our packing journey today, we haven't seen this one in a while. It's the Rudolph Shanker 2013 reissue. This is that kind of strange one that has the red on this side, white on that side, but yet spec wise, it's just about as close as you can get to his vintage original because it's got that cool rounded overhead stock 70s style. And they went for the two screw variety instead of the three. So far, it's the only one that they've done that has that really unique neck profile to it. Definitely more so D shape, really flat on the back. And it also has that Granadillo fretboard, which is, you know, just interesting. You either dig it or you don't. I kind of like it as a period piece. So we still are due for another reissue of these very soon. The cool half and half black white flying V's because they seem to do them every like 10 years or so. But you can check out the review and demo of this one to learn some more. But we need to get this one shipped off expedited to Arizona. And he gets the cool 80s flying V case with it too. And now we need to talk about this one. I'm sorry guys if that story was a little bit too dark for you. I have updated the title of that one. I hate how clickbaity it looks, but some people did not want to hear that story, but others really enjoyed it took in the whole thing to get the true message that we were trying to get across. Documenting the tale of that guitar and an individual's journey to how he coped with all that. So if you happen to have missed this one, you can check it out. But seriously, viewer discretion is advised. It is a sad tale. Somebody does die as well as this guitar. However, the good news is somebody has taken it on as a project. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that we'll ever see it again because that was not part of the contract. But I said, hey, if he wants to send us some photos when he's done, he can. But this is just going one state away. And I had to bring this up because the guy's last name who bought this is very fitting, Kruger. <laughs> Perfect for our Halloween theme. I can't wait to see what he does with it.
We haven't seen one of these in a while. It's the Dave Mustaine Custom Shop Flying V. So I actually have two of the flame tops and one of the ebony ones. But this was the first flame top to go. So we're just down to one of each if anybody's interested in a set or something like that. But I love the top on this one. I kind of regret letting it go. Because I really feel these were not heavily appreciated at first. But in the future, we're talking like 10, 15 plus years when they've stopped producing the Dave Mustaine Flying V or he's moved on to a different manufacturer or moved on to just a different body style. Like I know we've seen explorers and Les Pauls that are prototypes so maybe he won't play. So you just never know what the future holds on these types of things. But this one is actually going to a player who says he's going to gig this thing and have a great time. So let's get it to him. And our last one to pack up tonight did not take long to sell at all. It's the Cosmic Stew ES335. This is probably the best Cosmic Stew yet. You know, after I got to see all the Cosmics together, this one, they just keep making the finish better and better, but they all have their own unique attribute to it. But what I found funny about this one is there was somebody interested right away as soon as the video posted, but we were just a little bit too far apart on his offer. And then there was no interest for about three days. And then out of nowhere, within 10 minutes, I get four different offers on it. So I'm betting it was shared somewhere and then all of them saw it. One of the person like had the last name Cosmic, so it would have went great. But this ended up going to a buyer who lives outside of the United States. So he's using a forwarding service to get it to him. So goodbye, Cosmic Stew. I really hope they do a Les Paul custom in this finish one day because I'll keep that one. All right, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.